What is up, guys? This is Pinzo back with another video today, and what I have for you guys is some more Preducation. This one is going to be another VOD style type video. So this is a game that I played. I actually did play this pre Shinbi patch. So this is unbuffed Muriel. But I already, I actually thought she was fairly good if you were in comms with your team before the Shinbi patch. And I think the only thing that changed is your decision making has to be slightly better. Her right click and her Q both got straight up buffs. Like literally they're just, they just got buffed. Her ultimate also just got buffed. Her E got a little bit of a shift where you get more shield, but on a longer cooldown. And I really just think the only thing that it impacts is your decision making. Your decision making has to be slightly better now with your E, but everything that we're going to go through in today's video will carry over. So before we get into this, if you guys go on to enjoy the content, be sure to leave it a like, comment, and subscribe. But we are going to get right into this. So I was able to record this one a little better. So we do have gameplay sounds, but we don't have comms. So you guys get to hear the gameplay as you go. Let me turn it up a little bit for you. You can see here that we know they're in the jungle. We didn't go walk in the jungle. A lot of the time you want to spend the beginning of your time in the jungle. This Drongo gets kind of stuck on that wall right there. I don't know if he was lagging or something. We managed to... We unfortunately use our Murdoch Blink and leave him on 1 HP. And we don't quite manage to uh, to kill him. But we get Murdoch Blink and Drongo Blink both down. Uh, not, not the worst play to start that game. But just be mindful of that. If you know the enemy team is not in duo lane... Odds are they're standing behind a fog wall waiting for you. So just, just keep that in mind. It's something that uh, I see see a lot of people get caught by. And it's something that you, you just don't need to get caught by it, right? Like, you, you can avoid that, I promise. Um, so Muriel's early game is is pretty simple, to be honest. You you auto the wave. This game, I picked up my Q first because we I thought we could get that kill on Drongo. Most of the time, I would grab your E first. Your sh The shield on your E is generally going to be more impactful. Here I get a little caught placing a ward, but uh, I just backpedal away. I, I'm i not really scared. The Drongo never left lane, so even if he hooks me there, I'm probably still kind of safe. This is where I wish I had my E. You know, I, I don't have a shield for that guy. Muriel has a hard time saving teammates who get hooked. You don't really get to uh, thunk someone or hit a double decker stun, you know, that kind of thing when someone gets hooked. You can shield them. But that, that's it, right? You don't really get that person out of danger. So that that is one downside. Like Muriel into Richter is not a great matchup. I really like Muriel against Revenants if the enemy team has a Revenant. I try to block some shots here, but uh, I just, uh, I, I don't, I'm not, not big enough to get in, in the way. Try to return some damage. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of vibing. I know I'm going to have to back anyway. I don't have any health pots. So I'm just going to kind of catch part of this wave here. And, uh, and and I know I'm heading back to base. I'm going into Requiem. The reason I'm going Requiem this game is because we have a Murdoch, Crunch, and a Brux. We have three people who are going to use that Requiem pretty well. So I, I figure I'll go into it this game. Uh, right here, I'm just waiting for my Murdoch to get back. He's here. Now I can, I can kind of hold this for him. I'm going to use the rest of my HP to hold this because I might as well. And uh, I mess this up. The creeps aggro me right when I want to back up, and uh, I thought they were still on my Murdoch. I just wasn't paying enough attention, so I kind of mess up our wave hold here. Um, so th that that's on me, but I I know I got it back to base anyway, so I don't mind being a little low HP. I'm just headed back. These early laning phases with Muriel, especially pre level six, uh, it's a little boring. You press E, you press Q, you can play her a little bit more aggressively, uh, but. I, I do think that now with her buffed Q, I will say she's better at that, at kind of being able to run down some kills with that increased slow and the increased slow duration on her Q. You actually can run people down. So just now now that you can do that, you can play her a little more aggressively. But again, your, your main job is to kind of stand back and shield your carry, you try and get them that. Uh, you can poke with your autos. You, you do a lot of auto attack damage, so don't be afraid to kind of poke away at the enemy team with your autos. Here, we're going back in. Uh, Richter is kind of just screwed right there. He walks into the jungle to try and get a ward and gets caught by a crunch. There's not much you can do about that one. Just bad timing. Not not much else you can do. You'll see me try. I try and wander around the map a lot in this game. Especially on Muriel and supports pre-level 6. Uh, right now, where is my gold coming from? This is This is the thought process. My gold is coming from passive gold, the gold that the game literally just gets you for playing. 
uh, and it is coming from um, the support crest that gives me 25 gold every 30 seconds when I when I uh, attack something while a teammate's nearby. That's a kill where I just take that. That guy steps up a little too far. Richter not in the area. I take it to make sure he dies. Uh, I wish my, I always wish my Murdoch could get that right, but sometimes he doesn't. But uh, your gold is coming from only the support crest and your and your passive gold, assuming you're not taking very many last hits. The thought process is, if my support crest takes 30 seconds per stack, I can walk around the map for 90 seconds before I need to be in a lane and auto stuff to get those to to pop those stacks. I can walk around the map for 90 seconds and I don't lose any gold. I don't lose any gold. The downside to this strat like this is that you do lose experience you will not get you do get partial experience for being in range of a creep when it dies and that is what you lose from from this kind of play style where you want to run around you do you will be a little bit behind in xp i would use this a little sparingly until level six once you're level six uh and you have your ultimates on most supports that's all you need uh decker narbash muriel you know once you have that ultimate you're, you're pretty much good to go here we're, i'm just poking this guy i do a decent amount of auto attack damage I shield myself, eat his whole ultimate. Uh, gadget, domes, we're looking for this fang tooth, so it's a little unfortunate that we use gadget dome right there. But uh, they drop their Gideon ult as well, so it's not, a, it's not a big deal. But you can see, I'm trying to spend a lot of time out of duo lane. The downside of this is that my duo, my, my ADC can end up getting uh, bullied out of lane, right? They can get stuck under tower if the enemy team has a really good hold, like a, a wave hold. I'm going to have to go help and and break that obviously right so just no don't don't completely abandon your carry is what i'm saying but you do want to uh kind of try and spread your influence when possible so like my carry is he's three quarters hp he's under tower i know that they just did gold buff i'm like hmm, i might as well come back you know they, they have him shoved under his tower pretty hard maybe i can come get relieve some pressure you know hit, hit a bit of a pressure valve you know and and just open it up a little so that they so that they don't just get to sit on my carry they obviously have a have a ward here so i'm not going to be able to walk in and do much just corner juking looking for the hook he fakes me out here that that's a good one the the little fake out into the uh into the real hook that's that's a classic that is that is one that'll get you a lot more than you'd think it would so you'll you'll see that one it'll get me a couple more times i think in this game uh, this Richter was not missing this uh, during during this. Yeah, like I said, he he was just not missing in this in this game. We do get a lot of return damage on him. Get get his blink. It's on my timer, so I know when it's gonna be up. When I say that, I mean like my blink is close enough to his timer so that I know when my blink is up, his blink is probably up. That's what I mean when I say uh you know like Richter blink my timer. It's uh, when mine's up, his is up, is is the assumption. Obviously, mine is up like 10 seconds before his. Doesn't matter. It's close enough. That That's the call. So here, I'm going back to duo lane. I'm looking down at my experience bar, and I need probably about four or five more creeps to, to get to level six here. And Muriel's level six is obviously kind of what you're waiting for. You get that reversal of fortune. Uh, it's really good for letting you go across the map. I can help my solo laner. I can help my mid laner, your jungler especially. Like this game, I have a crunch jungle. Playing Muriel when you have a hard initiation. Like this game, it's in the form of my crunch and my grux. I have two people who, when they initiate, I can ult them. I just, I just have to, I just have to ult them. That's all I have to do. And uh, anyone that they initiated on gets knocked up, takes some damage. They get a fat shield. I drop and I give them more shields. That's sort of the play you're looking for. So here, now that I am level six, I will be spending a lot of time looking at my mini map, and I you'll see a lot of the time I'm just looking left. I'm just staring at my at my allied health bars in in the rest of the map, and that's kind of what you want to do. So like here, I'm just I'm just looking, I'm mobile warding, I'm just kind of checking out the jungle, seeing what's happening. Uh, get a river get a river ward down for my carry. When you can, it's good. I, don't put yourself in jeopardy to get the river ward. That right click having a bigger shield, I will say that's probably the most impactful Muriel change. It's uh, that shield is very consistent. It's very easy to aim. It's a very fast projectile. It's really easy to get that shield onto allies in the middle of team fights. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Here we're kind of like staring at Gideon. I'm going back to my Murdoch. I see them go on him again. I'm just gonna ult in. 
he gets uh hooked right when i land but we're not in a bad spot for this fight you can see i'm i'm pretty much in between murdoch and drongo for the for the entirety of this i'm tr i'm doing my best to stay in between them unfortunately drongo gets it gets an ult through he gets a good blink out as well but movement speed on crunch means that he probably catches up to him right like like at least you you it's a good chance and he does right there i just i'm as soon as i ult in i'm dropping my shields on my murdoch and then i'm trying to get in between him and drongo in this game uh it's different than like i don't know how body blocking exactly works in league of legends but in smite you know what everything is kind of two-dimensional so you don't get to aim like above someone's head really to to hit a shot right in this game body blocking is much more difficult especially on a smaller character like muriel so just keep that in mind you're not always going to be able to truly body block someone like their shots that is but uh it's not a bad thing to still try so here we get their uh we get their four camp unfortunately richter hits a nice hook crunch ends up getting his blink forced out uh we live we're just gonna back up off of that not a great trade uh, uh one jungle camp for uh, a blink is probably not great but i like the uh, looking for stuff when you win a fight looking for the enemy jungle to strip something like that when you win a fight is a good that's a very good call you guys should be looking to take even if it's the enemy you know white two camp or or their white four camp something like that you know if you can take something it's actually it adds up a lot so here me and my crunch are waiting for this guy to go in my murdoch kind of gets fed to the wolves again and then right here my crunch leaves and i'm not sure why like i i do and maybe it's because he saw the gideon coming maybe it, it was it was probably that call right i my, what i'm looking at is we win this 2v2 with me and crunch and uh, i do think we win the 2v2 against their duo lane but with the gideon showing up my crunch leaving living playing his own life is a good call i that's that's where i miss the call that that they're missing mid my bad sometimes it happens you know you you don't hear a call come out you don't you don't see someone leave they don't they don't maybe they don't walk across a ward all that kind of stuff adds up into me ending up making a a bad decision even if uh even if my crunch made the right decision and i was like bro what happened and he's like oh i did this and it's like okay that actually was the right call uh these guys are going for a little sneaky play we uh, they just run out i i don't think we catch these guys here or maybe we do do we catch these guys we do catch these guys they turn around and fight yeah they, they turn around and try and kill our murdoch i, I thought i kind of thought they got out right here because I remember them sitting around that corner from the Murdoch. Again, this game was played a couple days ago, so I don't I don't remember quite everything. I just know uh, this is a this is a pretty good match to do this on, and and you'll you'll see as we go. It uh, this is a pretty good education match. That was Gideon Blink. Always important to know when Gideon Blink versus Portal is down. That was Blink. Um, we see this Grux fighting this Fang Mao, and we just kind of collapse. My whole team sort of goes in here. We have four people on this Fang Mao. Uh, Grux uses his Phoenix. Uh, we use uh, Murdoch ult, and uh, their they their Fang Mao doesn't get the execute. Too slow on the ultimate. That ultimate goes off on the new patch. Ultimate speed got vastly increased on the new patch. So here I'm just shielding my gadget, just doing doing the damage I can, letting the dome cook that guy. That ult is never going to 100 to 0 my gadget at 14 minutes, so I'm really not too scared of it. But giving her some shields, giving, doing some damage, always, always helpful. So here, we're going to go into the Marshal and the Silentium. So they, obviously, they have a Gideon, so the Silentium is pretty good. Also, I will say Silentium is actually pretty good against Fang Mao. As a Fang Mao player, if I teleport into a fight and I get Silentiumed, a lot of my damage goes away, and I also don't have a lot of safety, right? I, if I don't have a shield up, I can't ult anyone, I can't, uh, like, blink out. It's, uh... Silentium can, is, can be good against Fang Mao. You'll see me, I, I'm mostly looking for the Giddy in this game, but uh, just keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to Silentium someone who is who has a lot of threat on your team. Like, if there's someone who's just threatening your team a whole lot, don't be afraid to Silentium. Uh, here, we get caught in this weird jungle fight, and I, I decide not to ult in. Uh, Crunch was already going to die. This guy ult blinking over this wall like a madman, was uh, that was a play and a half from Fang Mao. 
he he played that fight very well ends up with a bunch of kills and this is what i'm talking about we're down it's 9 to 11 and we're down in cs we're down to fang tooths this is pre-patch as well so this is no there's no primal fang tooth on this one this is this is still the stacking fang tooth so them getting more here would be bad uh let's see a gadget here i'm gonna ult in and try and save her i don't get the save but these guys are in a pretty bad spot actually so that was uh drongo ult and fang mao blink richter misses hook he's gonna die for this drongo is gonna blink away but we have muriel move speed like we might be able to catch up to this guy even turns around slows starts getting some damage he's gonna look to try and kill crunch here but uh my crunch makes the smart move just kind of back steps and manages to uh to survive there so fang mao gets away but we get the other two for that tier two is it a good trade probably not at 16 minutes a tier two tower at 16 minutes opens up the map a lot for them we can't walk up on this fang tooth side because if if we walk up to where the waves meet like normally in the in the dead center we're dead that we have no way out we have to run so far away that they're just they're going to catch us they're going to track us down every pretty much every time finish the requiem this is giving us a decent amount of power i have it at full stacks it's giving us power life steal it's giving me a lot of mana regen it's giving me a lot of cooldown reduction uh all of those things very good obviously plus the marshal is helping my grux helping my murdoch helps the crunch a little bit but uh mostly for the for the murdoch and the and the grux and here we're just kind of standing off on this on this mini prime we know they want this the issue is if they get this mini prime they definitely get mid tier two and they probably also get left tier two so us kind of on the standoff for for mini i i end up keeping an eye on this for a little bit longer uh we see them they're checking it they're gonna do this and they're gonna burn this so by right when we stopped looking they did that very very quickly so it's one of those that's just kind of unfortunate i make the call but the team just wasn't in position to do anything about it and now we have to get out we just can't we can't stick around and, and uh feed off of that i believe fang mao has the mini prime uh but uh we, we can't stick around and just feed off of that we kind of have to actually run away so here now we're stuck on defense there's not much we can do about this we're trying to get farm we're trying to to save our towers a little bit the mini prime is not here in left or in mid so we're not too scared of them being able to take this tower drongo's pushed up a little bit i get a ward down they see that ward it doesn't matter having that ward there alone is is threat enough don't be afraid to place wards just because someone's looking at you it, a lot of the time you'd rather have a ward they know about than uh not have a ward if that you know if that makes sense i start making my way into this fight and it's about right here i get the call that crunch says he's he says i'm out i'm out and so i i'm stuck in no man's land unfortunately i use my muriel ult to get out it's not always the uh the best thing like i wouldn't recommend that most of the time it feels pretty bad to have to use muriel ult that defensively again it's on like 150 second cooldown so having to use it defensively stinks but i would rather have my ult down and me be alive than the other way especially when we're this hard on defense and we just lost an inhib as well on the other side that's what that mini prime got them was a left tier two and an inhib uh my gadget gets yoinked right there that's a really good stasis right there to save her i'm not gonna lie that's one of those where if the gideon hits a rock and drongo hits an auto she actually dies and then we kind of get to hit the gas pedal on the back of this unfortunately gadget dome comes down she's too low to put it uh further into the fight uh my goal here is to keep crunch alive just keeping shields on as many people as i can my right click i silentium him so right here this is this is one of those where silentium's a really good item i the more i play the more i think this item is actually is actually very very good so this item does damage and it silences someone for like 1.25 seconds or something like that this is one of those where normally again i already said my main silentium targets are gideon for his ultimates and and maybe like the fang mao when he when he goes in right here this is a use for silentium that i don't see a lot of people take advantage of this drongo right here he's he's standing right here he has zero mana he cannot there's five five i have three te teammates sitting here all full health uh what's his plan his plan is to run away he's not going to turn and fight us if he runs this way he dies right yeah we he he can never get out 
will catch him every time. We have Muriel movement speed. We have a Murdoch with movement speed. We have a Grux here. Uh, so his only play here is to flash or blink through this fog wall up into mid lane once we all go down into the river. I know that's what he wants to do. He super looks for it too. You can see him. He he looks for this right here. He 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 just looks like that's exactly what he wants to do. So I hit him with the Silentium. He can't blink away. Uh, we end up getting that kill very easily. We we might be able to kill him anyway, but he ha still has that tier one tower there. So that Silentium to stop that blink is like that's super worth it. You know that's a Drongo kill. We're from behind, so any kill is worth a lot more to our team right now. Don't be afraid to use Silentium on people who, like, you're not even silencing an ability, right? Maybe you just silence the blink for a second, and that's all you need. So here our crunch comes back in. We get the mid-tier 1. Our team ro rotates to this Fangtooth. That was a really good fight for us to be able to turn this Fangtooth around. We start actually getting back into this game. We were pretty far behind. Now we have one Fangtooth to two. They most notably did not get the third Fangtooth, which is where the power and armor increases start coming in. So we we get this we get our first fang tooth. We still have an inhib down, but we kind of won a fight, which is a big step for us this game. We haven't really won a team fight yet to this point. Uh we get our Grux gets staggered on the way out of that. I don't know why he was hanging around. It's just a bad play. Leave with your team. That's that's all. When when your whole team leaves, you you also have to leave even if you kind of think you can fight someone and you're looking for a 1v1. Their whole team was respawned. You're never getting a 1v1, right? Like their whole team's going to be there. We see them pulling this 20 minute prime. So my gadget drops her dome over this wall and just cooks this enemy team. Uh, they, they're like everyone that wants to tank this just gets cooked. And so I, ch I, I have to check this because they could still be on this and they are. And so I round the corner. Uh, unfortunately, my crunch and my, my Grux, this is where Grux getting staggered comes in bad is, uh, he gets staggered and I, and we don't have any initiation. So I end up on the backside of this fight. I, uh, my thought process was go away from my team. Maybe I can live. And right about here, I was really, what I should have done is ulted away. I, I should have just ulted out. That's, that's the only way that I live right here. I never, I never run away. When I dropped down, I should have dropped through the fog wall and ulted out. Drongo does blink on me. So there's a small, a small plus to side to that is that Drongo used his blink for no reason. I'm dead there no matter what. Our Murdoch doesn't quite get the tier 2, but uh, gets one tower on the right-hand side. The enemy team pushing down this mid inhib. We do have a Gadget, who even against Prime Minions has pretty good clear. So we're not too worried about our core. They are going to get a, a mid a mid inhib. And here we are kind of just stuck on defense. So Gadget faking a blink right there is, is trying to bait out Richter Hook. Richter just blocks up, presses R. That's all, that's all he has to do. Here, I'm trying to get my Wellspring online. This is going to actually increase the sustainability of my team a lot because it's going to heal them and give us shields at the same time, which is just a very, very strong combo. Here, my goal is to clear minions as fast as possible. It mostly works. Here, I make a really bad ultimate. Don't do this on Muriel. When you have a teammate who goes in 1v5, don't ult on them unless your whole team is going to follow up. My, none of my team was there. My Grux got out anyway. Well, he, like, you know, he did, he did his move to get out, which was blink away. Uh, he gets blinked on, dies. I died. I totally fed away my life right there. There's no reason for me to ult that guy. So I could be alive right here. Unf Luckily for us, Drongo's pretty low and ends up getting picked, like, at, right at the beginning of this core fight. Our core is dropping, but the gadget dome is destroying the minions. So our, our, th with all the minions dying, we are able to actually really clean up this fight. You can see these guys are kind of just dying. That was a five for three. If you count me and Grux's stagger, realistically, that was a three for five fight where we lost one person and saved our core. Those guys are kind of trolling. I really think they could have won the game right there if they just focused core. They wanted to fight a little bit. We have three inhibs down and we are looking to defend there's not much to do here there's not much to say about it we are just looking to defend until we can get our inhibs up core 40 percent and healing uh it's it's one of those where it's like what are, what else do we do right we have to defend there's nothing on the map for like another minute and a half fang tooth's not up for two minutes uh prime's not up for three and a half minutes it's one of those where we kind of just hang around 
we kind of just we we can just we clear our jungle we clear our waves make sure they're not pushing our core the last thing we want to do is lose to a wave of minions but uh we we want to play safe my gadget is probably even pushed up too far here up to the river is probably too far at least alone if you have teammates with you then that's different but uh yeah this game is it's 20 to 22 as well it doesn't feel like it should be that far out but we are we're getting staggered a lot we're getting we're getting picked off we're getting super out of position like our grux especially has been picked like two or three times and that's it's making the game hard to hard to group up in fights if that makes sense especially with a muriel you really want to group up and fight so not having a grux to engage for me is making my job much much harder excuse me got a stretch so here again we know they're gonna group up on this fang tooth we can't really contest this the best we could do is like try to throw a gadget ability at it but even even if we do that we're probably just feeding by walking into this fang tooth so the unfortunate call here is that we kind of have to give up fang tooth our grux our grux calls it right here i uh, again i don't have comms but i know this so grux says here he says I'm inting for this tier two. I don't know why this is exactly the play, but we know f we saw Fang Mao leave the mid lane going towards left. We know most of their team is probably on this uh, Fang Tooth. So Fang Mao's here, Gideon's here. Uh, Grux says, I'm going to int for this tier two. So he ults to get the tier two here, and he's going to get it. And this is almost a good call. He's going to die for it. And it it's one of those where. Is it worth it to get the tier two gold wise right now probably not for his death uh but we did just get left in hib up and pushing that minion wave that far out is actually fairly good like that that actually does help i will say that much uh on top of that him dying here we that we're already giving up fang tooth he's gonna be respawned by the time prime comes up we're not losing that much for this this is one of those where it's kind of a coin toss sometimes this could be a good call sometimes this could be a bad call um it's it's one of those where it's hard to say he, he'll be respawned by the time they want to do prime or by the time they want to push their only call here i think that, that would mess us up is if they all end our core be right when they killed grux like if they now right now five manned our core could they get it maybe i'm honestly not sure but their our grux is going to be back up by the time we have you know by the time we have to fight for prime by the time we're defending inhibs again he'll be back and he got to tier two so it, it kind of evens out it's it's a tough it's tough to say yes that was a good call no that was a bad call you know for for something like that what that has you know upsides and downsides to it uh gadget makes a good call here they're sitting here richter's just waiting for that hook i like i really like the gadget hat animation through the fog wall where it's just hit is sit, sitting on someone but you don't know who i ward that just in case he tries the same thing and now they're hard pushing left uh, the reason that they push left is obviously because we have mid and right inhibs down and they can kind of sit here and wait until their other waves push in which they will because they have super minions so those waves will push up and eventually we'll have to defend those other lanes they use hook here and my murdoch says w he says he says go in he's like he's like the, they don't have a hook just just run at these guys they don't have anything they have three fangs but they don't have prime they don't have hook no just just run at these guys and he does they back off they 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 give up the space once we once we sort of try and take it back which is a good play by them because i actually do kind of think we win that fight right there if they stand and if they stand and actually try and try and take it so now prime with prime coming up here in about 20 seconds we start this sort of this sort of prime buff dance where we're both trying to get wards we obviously can't walk up and really ward in the pit so we have to play this super careful but we also have two inhibs down so we have uh, the Grux here backs to get to these inhibs. We have uh, mid inhib that just came up and we have right inhib that should be up pretty soon, but has a giant wave, right? So uh, my team is watching Prime. I know that their team's not on it. They're calling that. They're like, not on it. They're not on it. So I'm just going to stand here hidden. They can't see you behind this fog wall. And I'm just going to auto this wave down. I don't really lose anything for this. I know my team's not like my team's not fighting yet. I'm just going to auto this wave down. They don't know that I'm hitting this. Their wave's just dying faster, basically. And this is a good way to push out this mid wave. Kind of a lucky place for that mid wave to get stopped. But you, you, you take what you can get in games when you're this far behind. So we're watching. We see Fang Mao walk into the pit right there. And their Chimera's on this side of the map. Like, we, we have to be scared about them doing this. 
I would really like to back here. I'm trying to get my Tainted Totem online, which to be fair, I probably should have gone Tainted Totem third before Wellspring um, or gone like Wellspring Tainted Marshall would have been the other build option. But uh, their only healing really is Chimera, right? So having Tainted is not crazy valuable. If they had a Narbash or something, I would go Tainted second. But uh, getting Tainted online here would be would obviously be very helpful. Increases your shields, all that kind of stuff. So we're just kind of staring. These guys, now that we have three inhibs up, our waves are not pushing. The waves are not pushing into our base anymore. We can kind of stand and stare at these guys as long as they want to. And uh, yeah, so if they win this fight, they win the game. We have three potato inhibs. They can push down any lane and win the game. So we have to win this fight more than they do. So they're waiting for us to make a mistake. Right here, my call is... My call is... Uh, He's going to flash hook you. That's that's the call I made. I said he's going to blink hook you. If they win this fight, his blink like you the 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 idea is that as Richter, if you blink hook someone, they're going to die and it doesn't matter that your blink is down because you win the you win the game off of this fight. So I I say that he's going to blink hook you and that's exactly what happens right here. He blink hooks and misses. And that's really big. Now Richter has no blink and no hook. His, his hook's only down for probably about 10 seconds at this point in the game. But my my crunch says my crunch is right here my crunch gadget and murdoch are both kind of are all three wrapping into the backside of this fight i'm following my grux but i'm always in the fight right i have my ultimate when i need to i'm ulting whoever engages the hardest on my team that's the goal whoever starts taking damage or or is in the middle of five that's who i'm ulting so this fight here my my crunch says wait they just used everything why don't we go in and that's exactly what he does. He hits W. My Grux hits it with him. I'm just going to instantly ult. My Crunch eats a Richter ultimate. I'm going to ult onto him. I miss the silence onto Gideon. I hit the Richter body blocked it. I blink the Fang Mao ult and we're out. That is four for zero. It's easy as that. We're going to go through that one again because that one is uh, pretty hectic. So I'm going to I'm going to pause this a, a couple times as we go through which I kind of it, it's it's tough because it I can't play it in slow motion on this on this player. So so right here again my my crunch is it just he just get gets Richter ulted. He cleanses it and keeps fighting but he gets Richter ulted and that's what I'm looking at. My Murdoch here pretty safe. Gadget is is a very safe character and she makes characters around her safer. If Gadget domes her feet, Murdoch is safe inside that dome. It's a huge AoE to keep Murdoch safe. So my backline here, I'm not too worried about and I see that my crunch is on three people with a Richter ult, right? He, I, he's going to die. So I ult straight into him. He Brutalix's blinks in. When I land here, I see it. Murdoch has just killed this guy. I get that call as well. So keep in mind, a lot of this I'm not actually looking at. This is in my ears. I get the call. Uh, Kai dead. Kai dead. And Fang Mao is all the way over here. He's He can't get into this fight. I'm going to turn around and try and silence this Gideon ultimate. My knockup puts Richter directly in be in between. <laughs> I turn around. I see the Gideon. I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm going to silence him. And I end up silencing Richter here. Because he just he just ends up in my Silentium uh, line of sight, which kind of stinks. But uh, even if I silence Gideon, I don't know if we kill him. We kill we definitely killed Richter anyway. But uh, Drongo gets exploded in this as well. Keep in mind this whole fight is taking place in a gadget dome, so these guys are just getting cooked. This is just a this is just a wombo combo that that my whole team pulls off in the middle of this fight. Uh, sh again, when you land with Muriel instantly, most of the time. When you land on Muriel, you put your E on your feet. Right where you land, you you shield yourself and your ally when you land. Kind of the best play you can make. It's a, it's a fat 500 health shield when you land. Here, even though we're kind of low with Muriel shields and all five of us alive, we can shred this prime. Our Grux is fighting the, uh, the Gideon up here, and he's going to end up trading, which super stinks. Like, having a Grux, that's a lot of inhib damage that, that we're now missing. But the Gideon is, this is what I say when I mean staggered. When I say staggered, I mean these guys aren't dead at the same time. You can see, obviously, Kai, Richter, and Drongo all pretty much got evaporated at the same time. They're all dead at the same time. Fang Mao is just behind them. That's not really a stagger. But what is a stagger is that Gideon is 40 seconds, almost 40 seconds behind his Chimera, Richter, and Drongo. He is dead for a lot longer than they are right now.
it, effectively it's like he had a respawn timer that was 90 seconds and they had a 45 second respawn that's kind of what this turns into right he didn't really get anything done in those 45 seconds after they died and before he died so it's really just like he was dead extra long it, it's they, they call it staggering for those of you who haven't heard that before it's when you die without your team uh, here we we do get this inhib we all just turn tail and run we see fangtooth coming up we're gonna grab that on the way out and uh we have four people with prime we're actually even though we have three potato inhibs the inhibs after they respawn don't shoot people call them potato inhibs uh for again for those of you i i use some lingo and i've been told about it a couple times in the comments that i use lingo that you guys don't know so i i try to ex i'm trying been trying to explain stuff better uh, when i say potato inhib it's a respawn inhib that doesn't shoot so we have three of those, meaning they could walk into our inhibs and kill them at any time. But uh, they have now have an inhib down, which is worse than having a potato inhib. Our core is pretty much full health. Their core is full health. We grabbed the Fangtooth on the way out. Now we have about another two minutes with this Prime with which to do whatever we want. Our goal is to knock down another inhib here, and we do it. Uh, it's going to be tough. We don't have any lanes pushed up already. They're going to be pushing out whatever lane we don't push up. Mid will push for us, but mid, having mid inhib down is not quite as impactful as having a side inhib down. Just because it's closer to both sides, you can push it up while being fairly safe. Uh, we're The call is to send Grux to... Well, it's to, it was initially to send Grux to left. That's why he was just backing. But Grux doesn't have Prime. He died. So we end up sending Crunch to left lane to split. And we're going to do a 4-1 split where we have four in right lane. So they have to come contest us. But if they leave our left lane our crunch uncontested he's going to get a free inhib so you'll see the call here is for us we just wait the call is the call is wait wait for crunch to push up he's gonna he's gonna be the guy who's basically going to generate threats and pull them off of us uh they make a good call here so i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna stop and explain this a little bit crunch is on the other side of the map he's clearing minion waves they see him when you're when minions see you you're on the map right so they he is on their mini map they know that our plan is to sit here and wait. If we just have four people that are threatening in right lane, if they leave, if they take one or two people and go contest crunch, that their right inhib is going to die instantly. We insta-kill it. If they don't contest crunch, then he's going to get a free left inhib while they contest us. So these guys make a really good call here. Their call is w, win this 4v5. W key the 4v5. Uh, you see the Fang now comes in through the jungle, and the other four just run down the lane at us. And this is a really good call. Uh, it does not work out for them, but I, I the, the point being, they know they're at an advantage right now. The obvious downside is that we have Prime, but it's a 5v4 for them. If they hit a hook or a Richter ult on someone, right, like, that that's kind of it. Then it, maybe it becomes a 5v3 instantly, and, and they win that fight. So this is a really good call. Uh, we end up, we end up kind of getting out of this just fine. That Gideon ultimate's not very good. My whole team kind of gets away and he gets insta cooked by the, uh, by the ultimate. I was going to ult Murdoch to save him, but Grux is hard Wing. I get him with it. The gadget ult cooking that whole team, the gadget ult there kind of splits that whole team fight. We end up chasing these guys out. Uh, but this, this gadget ult is pretty much the, the reason we win this. If you watch this, so the gadget ult is, just came down. It's right here. Uh, it's, it's not, visually, it's not there yet. But it's, it's like on top of the Gideon, on top of these stairs, like right, right here. You see where the other three teammates are? They're on the other side of the gadget ultimate. So Fang, Mao, and Gideon are in this gadget ultimate. And the other three teammates are stuck on the other side. This gadget ult, I don't, again, I don't know. I don't even know who's on gadget this game. I'd, ha I'd have to pause and look. But uh, I don't know if this is on purpose even. This is just a really good gadget ult. It completely segments this fight. It turns this into a 4v2 instead of a 4v5 because they have three people who can't walk directly in. They can walk around, sure, but it's gonna if even if it's an extra two seconds for them to get into this fight, that's two seconds of a 4v2 where we get to blow we get, we explode Gideon. You'll watch Murdoch between Murdoch shooting him and gadget ult. This Gideon instantly dies, and then we get to focus 4 4v1 on Fang Mao. And by that time, the gadget ult comes down. Now it's a four v three. We're we're winning this now, and we end up we end up 
tracking them down. So this kind of zoning ultimate is kind of what they would call it. It's a it's a zoning ultimate. People say that when they miss a lot, but th this would be an actual zoning ultimate. It segments this fight very nicely. I don't even again, I don't know if this is on purpose, but that's where this ult comes down. Is you'll see Drongo has to back up, Fang Mao comes in, Richter leaves, you know. It, it's one of those where this Gideon obviously kind of W keys a little bit too hard. But uh, it segments this fight very nicely into into kind of giving us a 4v2, 4v1 back to back instead of giving us a 4v5, which is obviously really bad. Our crunch here ends up in mid lane. He's like he he was going to rotate over for this, but at this point we're v1. You know he uh, he gets to back up and and he gets to he gets to play just fine. Murdoch hits a snipe. Uh, we kind of just hard W key these guys. Chimera is gonna jump away. Not much he can do there. I kill him with Silentium, which is just kind of... That's BM. I'm not going to lie. That That's total BM. And we're going to take this wave of mid minions, and we're going to run this one down. This was a game where we were we were behind in this game until about the 24-minute mark. They got up three Fangtooths, but us winning one fight they, while they dance around Prime was enough. That was all we needed to be able to bring this game back. So this scoreboard, you can see it's obvious like 4-4-14, four, four, lots of assists. My crunch was huge, and uh, my Murdoch was the one who was able to make everything happen. This was all of our damage this game. Um, but yeah, there's like that one fight on, on Rhyme. They kind of mess up. We get a really good hard engage from my crunch. When I say hard engage, I basically mean he ran at them, right? That That's kind of what I mean. He didn't do anything special. He just... He just he just walked into them he well he dashed into them because he's crunch but he, he just walked into them we get that really good hard engage i ult onto him blow up that fight they kind of get wombo comboed and then on that last fight gadget hits a really good zoning ultimate that segments a 5v4 into a series of 4v2s and 4v1s that just lets us run through the enemy team so that was a game where we were behind a lot at the beginning of it but uh, coming back from those kinds of games is possible. And especially if you can get one good team fight, uh, the game's kind of over. And Muriel, I really like for these kind of games where you, even if you're behind early, a Muriel ultimate is a huge, is a huge thing. It's a, it's a 500 health shield that your teammate's not dying in. It does damage and it's a huge knockup when you hit the ground. Plus you're now arriving a Muriel that has 700 more health of shields in her kit when she lands, right? Plus a crest that... If you're running Tranquility, that's a heal that gives damage mitigation. Or you're running a Silentium, keep someone off of your team for half a second. Uh, that kind of stuff is, I really like Muriel in, in this meta right now. If you guys can learn kind of when to follow your team in, that's sort of your goal on Muriel. Is you don't want to engage, but if you have someone to engage, your goal is to follow them and and you you follow them to the ends of the earth, basically, is, is the goal. So hopefully you guys learned something through this. Hopefully you guys learned learned something about Muriel. I again, this was recorded pre-patch. However, I think that a lot of this Muriel stuff stays the same. Your goal is to follow your team in. Your goal is to have another hard initiator on your team, and um, your your decision making in new patch on your E has to be slightly better. But realistically, it's an ability you're only probably using once or twice in a fight anyway, and. Uh, you just have to use it at the right time, right? You'd want to use it when you're about to take damage. You don't want to use it after you've taken damage, uh, if that if that makes sense. If Gideon just hit you with right-click Q, don't shield now. He doesn't have those abilities anymore. Wait for him, wait five seconds for them to come up again, and when he starts posturing, use use your shield then. It's uh, It comes with some practice. So, so practice your Muriel. She's very strong right now. She's a top two support for sure. So uh, hopefully you guys learned something. That's all I've got for you. I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, if you liked, if you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry, I, I'm in, I'm all out of order. But uh, as always, I've been Pinzo. This video is done, Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.